one week or so, I'm playing pretty much this list because okay. I feel like the weapon is just enough to make it worthwhile with the Pantheras playing, but I also do like to punch people in the face with giants, so it kind of ticks both boxes for me. Both players considering their mulligans carefully. Shroud is a keepable card in this deck. Um, obviously, you are looking for Octobot and Field Contact as a matter of priority. Octobot more so in some matchups than others, because in some sort of heavy combo-based matchups, you generally aren't Octobotting that early anyway, so you don't really mind not having it in your opening hand. But certainly, yeah, the Field Contact is the must-have card, so there's always that debate on whether or not you can keep cards which do not uh, say exactly Field Contact on them. And I think it's reasonable to do so, because a lot of cards say sort of a Field Contact on them, right? Like Swind Did Swindle... They? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swindle tutors a minion. You think it has text on it about drawing a spell and combo a minion as well. It actually says sort of a Field Contact. Uh, Shroud of Concealment says sort of a field contact twice. That's actually what the card text is on that card. Yep, just run it through the old uh, Hearthstone translator on Google and you'll yep. be fine. Honest Hearthstone cards. <laughs> there you go. I do, it's a kind of cool keep there from Gabby. Gives him a nice, reasonably strong turn two option there, as you can see now. Already putting on some level of pressure on board, even though that's not Gabby's main plan with this deck. Punching for a four this turn is... Still a nice bonus whilst keeping that card draw high. And there you go. <laughs> Sometimes you've just got to ask yourself, right? Do you have what it takes to be a player of Gabby's caliber? And then you see a play like that and the answer becomes apparent. No, absolutely you do not. Double Octo now. The Garotes are there. Mana Biscuit, I know uh, Lorinda mentioned in testing that he, he's generally a Mana Biscuit gamer when it comes to yep. Rogue, when it's on offer. And of course, in a deck that wants to reduce the mana cost of cards, well, just getting more mana often oh. seems like a good plan too. Forget the combo. <laughs> Let's just, just dead. dead. <laughs> it's just curving out and killing him. Like, this is just going to be Garot Garot for four bursts, end the game. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, Divine Shield, especially on the duplicate golems, means that Solrend won't cut it. <laughs> Let it just shut up for shouting off to one side. He's got the nuts! I'm losing! <laughs> I knew Gabby would do this! <laughs> Or more realistically, be quiet and play in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably more I think right. is a, a very realistic outcome there. Letter just going to go for the... Yeah, the blast there, just to proc the quest to get rid of some of the pressure on board. Obviously got to be fearful of what that golem is. We know what it is, but the plus two, plus two on that wide board would be honestly just as dangerous to an extent. Yes. I think it was an option as well. Gabby turned it down. Because he took uh, Divine Shield off the first one, I think he valued summon a copy over the plus two, plus two. But yeah, I think the plus two, plus two was a real consideration there as well and was offered. I'm telling you, dude. Garot, garot, lethal. That's where this game was going. I called it two turns ago. I know I'm making the noise when Peter Griffin hurts his knee, but that's kind of what I feel like right now if I'm yeah, looking yeah, yeah. at the letter side of the board. I just want to win. So as long as you just don't do it extensively for the next like minute and a half straight, and it's a it's a great joke. You've got to have a lot of confidence in your show yeah. to make that joke. It just doesn't end. <laughs> it doesn't. It really doesn't. A look at these options now. The, the hand actually looks quite good for Letter if there just wasn't this board in the way of it, right? Double soul rend, even for that that say the field contact number one turn and uh, the yeah. rogue often does build up the board a little bit draw a lot of cards okay soul render away continue with your day once he gets down to 10 he can heal a lot with those cheap bristlebacks but he can't do any of that yet and there's just not many more options he can kill off one of them and the rest of the board with this plus soul rend and i think let's just gonna have to be happy that he can even do that at this point Zero healing, however, from the Drain Soul because it is life steal. It is not deal three heal for three. It is life steal deal three damage. So if it deals zero damage, you heal for zero, and that is exactly what happened there. Wait, can he just go for the lethal here? <laughs> what? Garot, <laughs> Garot, can he then just can he do reductions enough to field contact and draw one card and go for the bleed finish? 
I'm quite disappointed that uh, Letter managed to play around my Nostradamus prediction of just Garot Garot to face <laughs> being lethal. That's disappointed me enormously. But yes, you would expect a lethal out at the very least is going to be set up in the near future. But the question is whether or not you even go for it because Gabby might decide his, his position is just so secure here that he's just not even going to put the Garots into his first field contact, right? He might just feel like even though he has a high chance of lethal, he has a guaranteed chance of lethal later by waiting if it doesn't go in. But still, I mean, it's still four damage from hand that he can play on any given turn. Now for two mana instead of four. There is even, honestly, like, just some respect of just going double Garot here, because it means Letter can't normally tap. Now tap into double Bristle back. Ooh, it's a good recovery turn here from Letter. It is. That is my currency. To go for just Gabby. the one in Neophyte makes sense, right? But Gabby, a little sad that he didn't just get to play straight up aggro rogue this game, it looks like. He is going to have to play a uh, more long-term game plan. But this is what I mean, right? Is that why take the risk of your Garots going into the deck, trickling out one at a time, Letter being able to offsite the healing? Like, in what world are you losing this game if you just chill and play the game for combo normally? Lose out on a cool highlight, though. That is something to consider. <laughs> that is true. Shadow step, okay. Ooh, a plundy boy. Even with shadow step costing one, it's a good card. Oh. Gonna drop the biscuit this turn? Okay. Probably means he's looking at prize plunderer stuff. <laughs> Wait, can he go out, go out, plunder, go face for three? Does that ever do anything? It means one bleed is lethal. I like it. Oh, four, sorry, with the dagger. Apologies, I said three. True. I often forget rogue daggers in this matchup, or in this, <laughs> this deck. And he's going to step the contact? Okay. He did have a step out that turn, obviously, for uh, potentially one or two bleeds off the top, but not going to get there in the end. Wants to guarantee a backup plan, right? So he can go contact exactly. Penflinger X. Exactly, yeah. Meta does have that second bristle back, which is the thing that's really keeping him in the game right now. Mm-hmm. He can't even soul rend. He can go face for three, soul rend, and then just bristle back the Octo. Can still do that even now with the reduction. Ooh. Question then is, does he just die to fatigue? Yeah, I was just at that the, point, the yes. only problem with that <laughs> is the the old fatigue actually gets him. He has Bristleback, has Baron Scavenger in the pool as well. It's a couple of other cards, I think. Very nice. Heal for six, heal for 12. Scavenger can hit the board as well. Big deal. Gabby not looking particularly perturbed by all of this, though. He does still have a decent chunk of damage output, more so if the uh, Garots remain in his deck until the spell damage appears. Decisions, decisions, decisions. I think this is why only one of the reasons why only one Garot was cast on the previous turn is that he wanted to have that guaranteed spell in hand to be able to bounce the Penflinger back for multiple procs. But even then, you see him trying to take the decision as whether he wants maximum outs for the uh, Garots to be in the deck yeah. and be drawn. Okay, there is spell damage. That is a big deal. Now has the Shadow Step to go with it as well. So now these bleeds are doing colossal damage. And now he just needs to go because this is a turn that is constrained by time because he still has a large number of cards left in his deck. Still has plenty of mana to spend stuff on. Smiling as if he's done it already. Two. There's two. Yeah, he's not doing anything else. That's yep, three. Man. That's going to be the game. The wow. It looked like Leto was maybe doing just about enough to fight back there. He had a decent follow-up if he wasn't exactly dead that turn. But Gabby never really seemed too rattled, even though I think in the position he ended up in, 
it would be fair to be rattled? Is that a reasonable thing to say? Because he played one Garou, he didn't really get any of the bleeds. Then his turn was heavily reliant on exactly field contact pen flinger going the right way for him. So although he had mana to play with, it was still a little bit of a, a scary situation, at least from where I'm sitting, Sol, but Gabby seemed pretty chill about it. Yeah, I think if you have a regular human brain constrained by the limits of regular human wisdom, that could have been a struggle in the mid game. Because obviously you had this incredibly aggressive push to start off with. He then tried to cash that out immediately with a very aggressive play with the Garots using to buff up the prize plunderer. At that point, I agree with you. I would have been scared going into the next turn about, well, what if I just start playing cards and I start drawing bleeds? I don't get to the spell damage quick enough, and then the healing is just still there on the other side of the board. Like, there's literally just lifesteal minions in yes. play right now. Six damage. I have to worry about, um, like, what am I supposed to do here? But, you know, Gabby just supremely confident. He knew, he saw the lines, he knew. Um, really, he had an extremely aggressive game plan panned out from game one, that's from turn one, sorry. That's not just something that happened. That's a hand he kept to yeah. play Foxy One Thief on turn one and pressure the opponent, which is exactly what he ended up doing. Um, and it's not the way that we are really used to seeing that matchup one from the rogue side, but sh um, certainly Gabby showing, hey, you know what? You don't have to give them time to discount their giants. Just beat them up before they can even get to that point. Yeah, it seemed to work out. I will say Letter like, just about stayed in that game as well as he possibly could have in that instance. Again, I think I would have already conceded close enough at that point, but some good plays there. Did keep him in it for a while, but just not quite enough with those bleeds. He's going to be moving on to the OTK Demon Hunter list here. He does have the the quest in there, of course, but just generally the win condition is still that Ilganoth plus damage uh, with the yes. lifesteal burst, of course. Uh, so not the Brute, not the Fell Demon Hunter. And in this matchup, Sartle, uh, how does this one often go? Because both players are pretty much trying to do the same thing. They are, yes. Um, generally, I think the Demon Hunter is just a turn or two slower than people expect it to be. I think the trap that people can fall into is they take what turn Brute Demon Hunter gets Kurtris in play and then apply that to <laughs> OTK Demon Hunter. And it's not quite the same thing because in OTK Demon Hunter, okay, sure, you don't have the Brutes, right? So there's a few dead cards that you can't draw. You don't have the Lion's Frenzy, so there's a few cards that you don't draw. But you do have two Fell Screen Blasts, a, uh, two Moargs, two Talented Arcanists, the Ilganoth itself, etc., etc. Two eye beams as well. There's a lot of cards in there that don't draw cards. Um, so I think on average, completing quests can just end up being a turn or two slower for the Demon Hunter, which gives the window for uh, Rogue to get through. But I will say it has oh. to be a quick Rogue lethal to keep up with the average pace that a Demon Hunter is going to throw out at you. And how do you feel about this glide keep, Sartle? This can... Uh cause a little bit of havoc with Rogue especially. I know that Letter yes. will be keeping it to help with his quest potentially, but the impact it has on his opponent's deck can be pretty huge with the emphasis that Rogue puts on card draw. I am traumatized by Glide in this matchup though, because we tested this specifically, uh, me and TJ uh, tested this particular interaction, how it affected things. And obviously I was thinking, I was playing the Demon Hunter side and I was thinking, this is sick, right? Like they're gonna Shroud of Concealment. They're gonna have like nine cards in hand. I'm gonna shuffle them away. They're all gonna go back in the deck. And then not only am I cutting down their hand size, I'm increasing their deck size, which is a massively right. relevant thing in the matchup. However, every time I did it to TJ, he'd shrouded into his two worst minions, and then the Glide gave him Octobot, Field, Contact, Foxy, Fraud, Swindle as the four cards that the Glide gave him off the top. So it ended up being completely counterintuitive. That teaches us nothing, because on average that doesn't happen, but that was the reality of what was going on every time. So I'm a little bit traumatized <laughs> with that interaction in the matchup, but it should be really good for the Demon Hunter. Teach us something that TJ's the nuts. He plays he around is, cards yeah. even when he might not necessarily be intended to. What a god. He absolutely is. Hello, Gabby ending up with a refreshing spring water pick from the One Thief. Although it's not as likely, of course, in, as it is in Quest Mage mm -hmm. to go with its full benefit, I think just having potential card draw in case of that worst case scenario Probably. is worth something, right? It's card draw in Rogue, so even though it's not perfect, it's a, it's a good backup plan if the worst case should occur. Yeah, 
I think the real debate that turn for Gabby is to how much he was dumping there, whether or not he could afford to use a Shadow Step, whether or not he wanted to commit the Guardian Org Merchant to the board, because of course uh, any card that you play out of a Secret Passage is not going to remain in your deck after that fact, so much in the same way that you know Glide doesn't really uh, draw people yeah, cards, but it does increase the size of the deck in this kind of matchup. Secret Passage does the opposite. A pretty solid reduction there, honestly, hitting the Ilganoth. Not a huge reduction, but even bringing anything down by one mana, any combo piece by one mana is a big deal in this deck, of course. I'm fairly sure at some point that's going back in the deck, though, the way this uh, hand is panning out for Letter right now. Hmm. But it's reduced. <laughs> yeah, it can get reduced by a lot more. Just chilling this turn. And that also suggests there might be a glide coming up in the near future because uh, that's always a bad feeling when you have a sigil in your hand, but you play it the turn before you then intend to glide. It usually doesn't work out particularly well. You're just losing out on value. Much better to play the sigil on the same turn that you glide, so then you instantly refill your hand up the next turn as well. And you do it again. Yep. Gabby juicing up on some minions, does hit a Neophyte that he can play out from hand immediately though, which again is very much to his benefit because he does not want to be sitting around with a huge hand size to play around that glide out from the opponent. And the Colt Neophyte itself shuts it down directly. It's a direct punish to what Letter was trying to set up this turn, I think, which would have been uh, Sigil for zero, I-Beam for one, Coin Glide, and then say go and get off to the races. But he cannot do uh, nearly as much as that with the Colt Neophyte in play. Yeah, and it beats stealth. It's actually pretty infuriating here for Letter, isn't it? Yep. One good thing is he can say, you know what? Demons. If I don't glide you this turn, you might just have more cards in your hand next turn. How about mm -hmm. that? <laughs> just limit his turn overall. As you said, you don't really want to sigil this turn. Mm -hmm. You just have to go double jump, just see what he gets, and then just carry on with his day. Demons. <laughs> Demons. I know you like but... <laughs> I do still like dumping some cards, honestly. Like, I don't think the game plan has changed significantly, and I think that game plan is still Glide. Getting these cards out of hand makes some sense to me. And honestly, Gabby might just smell a rat here as well and do something very similar. Care to make a wager, friend? Drop a few cards out of hand. Yep. Love to see it. I mean, it's not even a bad turn, is it? That's the best thing here. Like this, it's not as if Gabby's sacrificing tons from his turn. Like you can argue whether the Org Merchant is valuable enough to keep. I don't think so. So I think this is really good heads-up play from Gabby. That's just a really good recognition of the situation, right? Is that if this board, first and foremost, he's playing around Glide. Secondly, he's playing around quest completion because he also played a Neophyte this turn. Thirdly, he's also saying if you don't have pretty much exactly Immolation Aura to be able to clear out this board, I'm going to go Kazakus One Mana Golem next turn and then you're <laughs> yeah. real, real dead. Demons. Yeah, Letter has been given awkward turns back to back here, hasn't he, from Gabby? I, I'm staring at his hand. I'm not even sure what he should look at. Hmm. Like this philosophy is kind of just pointless as a draw. May as well not bothered. <laughs> you ever just look at your deck and go, I don't know why you bother. Like, why are you even giving me a card? Yeah. Look, put it back in the deck. Put it on the bottom. Yeah. I don't want it. Yeah, Letter doing the best that he can to play around the situation, limiting the uh, outs for the Kazakus as best he can, keeping his own hand size small as best he can. It's not working out particularly well here. I'm sure this will be a one-mana golem played this turn, almost regardless of what happens if Gabby wants to continue to play around Glide. Do you not no think real it's reason. ever worth holding on to it just because he has field contact? It's true, he did draw field contact this turn, but at the same it time... Depends what the golem is as well. Yeah, it does depend on quite heavily on the golem, and it's... I still think really quite optimistic to be thinking you're holding on to any given hand, but honestly, what you've done is shuffled a one-mana Battlecry minion into your deck that is full of one-mana Battlecry minions, even if you get glided, right? So it's actually not the worst thing in the world to see yeah. that happen. And I guess at this point, like, Gabby's on four cards. One of them is yeah. a golem, which... And one of them's a mage card. Like... At this point, does is Letter gliding 
for Gabby or himself, right? Hmm. Because that, is this really a glide that's going to destroy Gabby if he goes for it this turn? I mean, from Letter's point of view, I mean. From Letter's point of view, no, it looks really weird, right? But from our point of view, there is a field contact. And if you can remove a field contact from the hand, you probably should do so. Still, though, Gabby made it about as least, pun least punishing as it could possibly be, the way he's uh, approached the last couple of turns. So, strong overall. to gets that second quest proc done. Springwater comes back, field contact comes back, and a one-mana battle cry comes back. It's the same hand. Corporate would like you to spot the difference between these two hands. He's for letter now, he has that cheap acrobatics. Gonna draw a lot of cards next turn, maybe he can aim at getting Curtis down if the draws are great, but it's a little bit harder, as you mentioned in this deck, than it is with the... Uh, <laughs> Literally the, the same top. hand! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shadow Steps as well. The hand's just full. It's just full. The I, disgusting. I've seen a lot of Hearthstone turns in my time, but that feels like the most spirit-breaking turn I've seen for a long time. It's like, okay, Glide. He's got four bad cards. Wait a minute, why has he got 20 cards in his hand? What happened? Yep. I just played Glide. Oh, Absolutely horrible. miserable. Letter will feel at least that he can get his own quest done this turn. But unless he can do it for two mana in total, he's not going to be getting Kurtris down, which means he does feel significantly behind the play. And this is what I mean, right? Like, yes, there's been a good amount of disruption on the side from Gabby, but this is turn seven. And it's not even quest complete. It's not even Kurtris in hand. It will be Kurtris in hand this turn, but it's not even Kurtris hitting the board. Whereas in Brute Demon Hunter, we used to consistently Kurtris hitting the board on turn six, right? With quest being completed on turn five. Um, and it's just a little bit slower with this version of the deck. But yes, a big part of that has come down to just how disruptive Gabby has managed to be on the other side of the board. And already, looking at Gabby's hand, very similar, I guess, to the Warlock plan. Like, Let is on 17. He has options to heal with Fell Scream, of course, but he's been pushed down a lot here. It goes for the Stilina, though. Misses. So what's the what's second priority here? Shadow Step or Aug Merchant? Probably Aug Merchant. Shadow Step also isn't spell damage as long as there isn't an Aug Merchant in the hand, but it's hard to say. I think also Aug Merchant functions as an Octo Procker, right? Are there still two Octos left at this point? Obviously, one's just got drawn, but I don't think we've seen one all game, right? Let's find out. Yeah, boom. Correct. Second one's still left remaining in the deck. Yeah, I think I would have thrown the Aug Merchant there away personally, but honestly, the, the, the big one he was looking for was obviously that yes. one mana field contact that he knows is Shadow Stepped into the hand. So many cards. There is a second glide in Letter's deck, which would be quite yes. clutch if Gabby holds on to these cards this turn. It's quiet. Too quiet. Hey, loser! And that's his spare one as well. He has that one mana field contact in hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it when you've got a spare field contact. Yeah. Always got to have a backup. Perhaps a bit awkward. I'd almost be tempted to just prep something out. It looks like he might be doing it anyway. Okay, interesting. Um, just, you know, so prep is not a card that then gets shuffled into your deck. But the problem is with just prepping nothing is that you just get a Penflinger back in your hand. So you kind of have the same amount of cards being shuffled into your deck to play around Glide anyway. So I think that prep was just to get the Penflinger back in his hand more so than anything else. And also, I think it's fair to say, like, with no cards in hand, like, prep's probably the better one to go, because Flinger will proc field contact, right? You can yeah. use it to do that, proc Demons. Octobot, whatever. I know he has other options to do those things, but still. I think it's fair to say, normally at this point in a rogue game, an Octo has already been used on a an earlier game hand, right? But with two Octos yes. potentially available for Gabby, I don't think mana will be too much of a problem, so the prep, not the end of the world. And I think um, that previous turn was probably a fairly good lesson oh. in the deck from Gabby because 
a lot of people there might get distracted about the idea of, oh, did I have lethal that turn? And yeah, maybe. Maybe you did, right? One mana field contact, you drew the Octobot that turn, you had spell damage in hand, you knew you still had Shadow Steps remaining. Yeah, yeah maybe you could have got there. But why try it and fail, right? There's just no reason to in that situation. Just like that. Yeah. Abby, 2 0 ahead. Bit of a weird way to <laughs> for the game to end off the back of the glide, but again. Gabby Pound on the pressure, playing around Glide very well. Did end up on the receiving end of that Glide from Letta, but yes, the recovery was very strong because the cards he got given back to him, but still he put himself in a position where he wasn't completely blown out by the Glide, right? Like he, he didn't have that many cards in hand. He put forward a pretty dangerous looking board as well with that disruption. So yeah, I just think very well played from Gabby, just doing doing everything right, at least in this rogue, uh, in these rogue matchups, at least as far as my mere mortal brain can tell, Sotto. Yeah, there were two turns there where most players would have drawn cards, got glided, been sad about it, right? He had refreshing spring water in hand basically the whole game. I think a couple yeah. of people probably would have been tempted to draw a couple of cards, got glided. Instead, uh, Gabby spent those two turns where he was expecting a glide, uh, dumping cards and playing neophytes, which was catastrophically disruptive to Letter's game plan. Uh, the other really cute players we were talking about was the play with the Golem, where I initially said, I think almost regardless, uh, one mana golem will be taken and played here to play around glide but i think the almost in that almost regardless is battle cry draw a card right because that way by having a draw an extra draw card shuffled into the deck you're actually improving a glide for yourself right on average by having that card then come back again yeah. obviously he hit the absolute nuts off the glide as i was describing <laughs> with the uh, he clearly has a bit of the tj factor about himself where he got uh, field Contact, Shadow Step, uh, multiple one mana battle cries in the end, including the draw off the top the next turn. But it was a situation that he was deliberately trying to engineer himself as well. Yeah, we are getting to the point where I need to start keeping track of these things. The Dark Dynamic, the TJ Factor. Uh, yep. Who's going to be next is my question. Uh, moving on to game number three, though, of course, Gabby going to stick on the Rogue because this is last hero standing. And Letter now has to sweep with Shadow Priest if he wants to win this series and move on to tomorrow. Uh, a big ask of any deck, honestly, to sweep, but Shadow Priest has the ability to get those nutty openings and just outpace almost any deck in the game right now. The only problem is Rogue can control the board very effectively, even if it's not some of the more tempo-focused style of Rogues we've been used to in the past. Absolutely, yes. Um, it's where cards like Kazakus can really come into their own. It's where cards like Foxy Fraud can really come into their own in these kind of matchups just for how that, that extra tempo that it allows you to have. And obviously Prize Plunderer can be the uh, the absolute beast mode card when if it comes down in this matchup, particularly alongside Shadow Step, and particularly alongside a Field Contact. Thank you, game, for lining up all of those cards. There is the uh, X Factor that we always have to talk about in the form of that Alusha, though. Uh, yes. There's often a good target to hit in any given rogue hand when you are planning on playing Alusha, if it's not exactly one of those lethal Alushas we see a lot of the time in the early game. But Gabby does have to be aware of that, but honestly, a lot of the time, especially with a combo deck like this, there's not much you can do to stop that happening. You're not going to just randomly play Garotes, you're not going to randomly play a field contact on the board so it doesn't get Alusha. Field contact, prep, swindle, picks up the brain freeze. That's actually a pretty fortunate outcome for Gabby, I would say there, because he is a one-off brain freeze gamer in his version of the deck. Um, but he is just going to choose to spend that turn just gathering a few resources, stepping the uh, one mana field contact back to his hand. And now he has the setup with the Octobot, the Penflinger. Just going to trust his deck at this point. Hope that he can hit some juice with uh, prize plunderers off the top of the coming turns to be able to create a big enough tempo swing here to uh, snowball the game. And here, pretty a given that it's going to be an Og Merchant and a Wriggling Horror. Just interested where the Horror goes. Okay, he's going to go maximum defense on the uh, on the Void Touched. I did wonder whether he, he could have gone for the 2 one force Ooh. for the Horror instead. One mana, one draw. One mana, one draw. What are we interested in? One mana or one draw? One mana, apparently. Dynamic, of course, being whether or not the field contact comes into play before the pen flinger, which you can do that. You'll draw one more card, but you will pay one extra mana for the field contact without discounting your hand first. Hey, loser! Initiating overdrive. Too quiet. 
Shadow steps. Bot. Bot can now come back down for zero. Penfling is still in hand for one. Make the remainder of the hand cost zero. Cot Neophyte and Brain Freeze still usable. Okay, he's just going to hold on to the Octobot in hand, though. Sufficient. Got a second Octobot here, so it's just going to replay it out anyway. Not many ways, if any, that that Octobot can get one shot, right? Unless I'm being really stupid. Sorry, I was too busy counting uh, lethal on the other side because okay. the Void Touched has hmm. died. The Wriggling Horror has not, though. Otherwise, we'd be in business. Sorry, what was your question? Uh... There's no way that that Autobot can get not procced, right? From Priest uh, on this board, obviously. No. Yeah, so he's fine with replaying it. immediately. Yeah, how much damage is this then with the Void Touch? Three, six, seven, eight. That is a loon's win. It's what, 16, 17? Yeah, if the uh, Wriggling Horror was dead, or like if there was just a different 2 1 on the board and the Wriggling Horror was dead right. and you were able to raise dead both, then it would have been lethal. Wait. <laughs> Not in this situation. Oh, he doesn't get to hero power. I was looking at like Wriggling Horror go face, Guardian Og merch in it, and then raise dead. Yeah, then you wouldn't fit in. But, but yeah, you wouldn't, be you wouldn't fit in the hero power alongside uh, Void Touched and Wriggling Horror anyway, I suppose. True. It's going to guarantee the Wriggling Horror Resurrect, though, which again makes perfect sense. It's just more yep. damage, it's just bigger minions. It's exactly what you want. And Gabby now, massively on the back foot, at least in terms of board. He has to pull something out of the bag right now, and he's got a good hand for it, but is a 17 card deck his uh, limitation <laughs> here, Subtle? Oh, you're thinking lethal this turn, I see. You're a, you're a man of great ambition. Sometimes you've got to be. I mean, his hand is good for it, right? He can do many, many things. I suppose, yeah. Efficient is sufficient. You're paying for my discretion. Initiating overdrive. Prize Plunderers probably did look like the best out in that situation. I was considering going for spell damage in the garrots, as imagined, but Shroud of Concealment. Does allow him maximum outs for Prize Plunderer on this turn, which does allow him to create pretty big tempo swings against this. But I think the one thing that Gabby would be very, very eager for in this position is a broomstick, as some other people are playing in the deck. Right. That would be able to make a mockery of this board state. However, having said that, he's doing a fairly excellent job already, it has to be said. Yeah, how much is this though? Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's plenty of damage if Gabby can't do something about the rest of this board, and he cannot. He cannot. Hey, letter. Step one achieved. He didn't lose the series this game. He's fighting back. Shadow Priest still going to be on the line next matchup for Letter. And just checking now, Gabby has his own Warlock and his Druid left over. And again, Druid is a good matchup for the Priest, at least from where, you know, when I've been playing it, it's felt pretty good. You're pretty aggressive early on. And suddenly, you know, Celestial on not turn seven, but seven mana for the Druid. It feels so bad when your ball's extremely wide as Priest and you just push tons of damage anyway. Yeah, it's one of the matchups in the game where Celestial Alignment Druid isn't really Celestial Alignment Druid. They're just Turtle Druids. That's, yeah. that's what it comes down to. Yep. Um, Face Hunter and Shadow Priest, that tends to be your win condition most of the time, um, is to just put up that big wall. And then even if that doesn't necessarily win you the game, which it doesn't, it buys you enough time to then actually do something powerful with the deck. Or perhaps if you can go like Bloom Solar Turtles um, early enough in the game with an overgrowth, that can be enough to be straight up game winning. But we will cross that bridge when we come to it, or uh, burn that bridge when we come to it, as Gia said the other day, which amused me endlessly. Um, but we're going to be dealing with the uh, Warlock matchup this time around, which, you know, I think people are a little bit more familiar with overall. You know the dynamic. You just need a decent hand early on with a good amount of removal and a soul rend for the Warlock. And if you don't have that, you're going to be in a world of trouble. I think Divine Shields, yep, those. Divine Shields in the opening hand for Letter are going to be a very, very big deal because Divine Shields are massively awkward for Warlock to deal with. I'm sure people, uh, most people who play a decent amount of Hearthstone in kind of middling or more casual ranks have a good experience still of what playing against Paladin feels like. And those Divine Shields are a nightmare to deal with in 
in most spots, and Letta will be a, doing a decent Paladin roleplay this time around, although the only thing he's missing at the moment is a minion with enough health to put a Divine Shield on. <laughs> it's kind of rough, isn't it? There's got to be questions asked as to whether Og Merchant Coin Tour Guide happens at this point, if he's feeling that spicy. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing to bear in mind, just from the priest side of things here, uh, Letta will, of, of course, try to be super aggressive as he can in the early game, and if he can't make the board soul rend proof then he will definitely need those refills whether that's raised dead uh well oh, I, I know you said ultron then um and then, and then you said voltron uh the decepticons uh if you <laughs> ultron voltron megatron yeah mm. uh, it doesn't matter does it yeah uh or the, as the megazord yeah throw that one in there as well or as we saw in an earlier game, I think it was today, with those voracious readers, right? You just need some kind of refill to pile on the pressure if this can get cleaned up. But first, Sol, gonna build that board and it's not going well so far. It really isn't. <laughs> Give me more than one health! <laughs> This is like the rogue problem you run into when you cut all the one thieves and everything else from your deck, where you just don't have enough health on any of your minions to give divine shield to give uh, spell damage to. This is where you live the dream: coin out the other tour guide and be like, "I'm going to lose him next turn." Oh, I just always gets there. Always gets there. <laughs> that's what that's time. what I see on the twitters. You yeah. play Lucia and win. I mean, yeah. I never said it was wrong, Sol. Okay. Here for the tour. Raise dead for the tour guide. Getting some mana efficiency in here. Hitting first stage of quest. Drain soul or neophyte can come down alongside this. Abby probably feeling a little bit afraid of gambling. Because the coin's yes. been held, Agreed. because we're going into turn three, obviously coin gambling. Uh, so just probably thinking about that right now. Not that he has much to say about that if it happens. He doesn't really have the hand to get there, but just maximizing life taps and progressing his own game plan is about as good as he's got. I wonder. Yeah, big agree. We talked about this earlier, right? Where you see these weird starts from priests, which don't really go to plan. You start thinking about what cards are in hand, and quite quite often your mind goes to gandling Elusia. Um, so Gabby's just back in that same position where he's playing quite aggressively around the Gandling out in this position because you can imagine, let's say, a Gandling raised dead mm. hand here, right? Where you, the opponent coins the Gandling, trades in the desk imp, plays raised dead, gets a bunch of cheap minions in hand, makes a board of four fours, suddenly you're in trouble. Can't be doing any of that when a Colt Neophyte comes down. Letta just has to be happy at Riddling Horror Tour Guide to ping off the Neophyte and go, right? Plays pretty heavily into the Soul Ren, but what else has he even got? Yep, agreed. Seems like the vanilla good play this turn. Just has to hope this sticks, hope it can dunk some damage again next turn. Hope that he draws a playable minion off the top next turn that adds some power to the board, and then that plus Coin Lucia just ends the game. And uh, you know what? <laughs> it might. Not like this. I'd just like to make it clear. You were memeing because you thought this opening was so bad that even Alusia could not save it. It was. <laughs> Gabby's messed up. <laughs> Why well, hasn't he drawn Soul Ren, Sol? Tell me this. All right, so... Let's say Drain Soul comes down. Drain Soul hits a 2-2. Two, two. Gabby's at 21. There's 7 in play. 7 goes face. So he's at 14. There will then be 8 in play with the Elusia. And let's say, what? What's the most aggressive minion that can get drawn alongside that? Another Wriggling Horror adds 4 to the board. That would bridge the gap alongside the hero power. If he doesn't Drain Soul, it's a lot scarier. Because I did that calculation factoring in plus 3 health, minus 2 attack on the other side of the board. That works too. Could you use the ping instead of the minion. Does that ever change anything? Like you could coin a Lucia, look, have a look at his opponent's hand for two mana, yeah, and, and then if it ping. doesn't, if it doesn't come to fruition, he could just use the ping. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Come. 
I kinda like it, actually. Yeah, he's just getting max power. This should represent more power over two, just playing the extra minion. Right, I think that's the snap concede there from Gabby, right? Yep, oh, Gabby's already out of the game on his screen. <laughs> it's gonna be the game, letter evens it up, two and two, which means last game, and it is that bad matchup, Sotl. My only question is, why didn't Letter just save us some time and start with Priest? It's just the best. This is what I said, right? Like, it felt like the way the dynamic was yeah. set up, it was ban Shaman, sweep with Priest. Um, I mean, I suppose, okay, here's the argument, right? Is if you are trying to, to min-max and Nash Equilibrium and everything, the things down to the point where you're absolutely optimizing your percentages, because um, Q order and individual matchups and which matchups hit which do matter a lot more in Last Hero Standing than they do in Conquest. So if you want to really maximize your opportunities, maybe being that predictable is suboptimal, where, you know, Gabby would then look at the ban strategy and say, okay, I'm expecting my opponent to sweep with Priest. So they're probably just going to queue Priest first and try and sweep with it. Whereas this way around, Letter can try and engineer a different matchup to maybe giving it, give him a bit more of an edge, pick up a win somewhere that he wasn't expecting it. That would be my number one explanation. But yeah, personally for me, this looked like a pre-sweep kind of series. And we are heading in that direction, even though it is the reverse variety of sweep instead of the straightforward variety of sweep. And I guess that's one of the, the answers to an extent, right? Is if Letter has to fall back on his priest, well, there's still the same decks from Gabby. Right? Yep. Like, yes, for example, the, the fear to an extent is like if Gabby's Druid got to uh, like grab some wins and then it's not as bad for him to grab the loss with it, his Druid didn't get into Snipe. But in general, if Letter just ends up sweeping but it just takes a bit longer <laughs> with Priest this way, it's doing the same job. There's no, you know, we don't give him extra prize money for 3 0 in, right? So it's fine. <laughs> it's not the life coach rules. I was going to say, I'm reminded again of the life coach <laughs> rule. You don't get what? an award for finding the best play in the, 15 seconds instead of 70. They don't just, like, give you an A. It's it, such a great quote. It, it is, because it's so simple, yet so true. Like you yeah. just cut, there's no argument against it, right? It's just true. Yeah. Well, what? once again, here we are. <laughs> More like the witch <laughs> Ah, I see. Mind Render Elysia ASMR. Of course. The thing we've all been waiting for. There is a lot of ramp from Gabby. Yes. So that's going for him. You know, we can see Elusia, we can see the Void Touch, the Wriggling Horror, Raise Dead, everything that piles on pressure for Letta. But Gabby's got cards. He can play them. Let's see how he plays. Oh, the right cadence. It was close enough, yeah. I got what you were going okay, for. Okay, good. In a while. Lunar Clips, honestly, pretty clutch because that's close to all the re removal Gabby's got in the deck. Honestly, the Lunar Clips yep. and the, the Feral Rage is about as good as it's ever going to get. So the fact that you could just get rid of the Void Attendant on Curve there is pretty reasonable. Ooh, that fin so tiny. Just gonna raise dead right now. I was wondering again whether it might be that kind of setup where you try and get back exactly void touched and wriggling horror a little bit down the line, um, because you are likely to be able to dictate any trades on your own terms. As you said, Gabby's not gonna be shooting removal spells at your minions. He's really just going to be playing minions on his own at this point. And it's also why the Wriggling Horror landed where it landed, right? Like, it, it dodges the I Lunar... Mean, it... I mean, I'm trying to do my job, Raven, but what do you want from me? What do you want? I've not requested anything from you. All I want you to do is turn up on time and cast with me, okay? okay. I'm not kicking off. I did off. that. Oh, right. letter. Gotta be happy with that one. Guaranteed win, nothing right. that Gabby can draw to save him here. There's the concede and Alusha for a second day in a row here in the European Grandmasters. An absolute terror. And I think fair to say on everyone's most wanted list for these upcoming nerfs slash buffs that apparently we're getting in, I don't know, a week or so. Go and read the tweet. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, we can see why. That's two days in a row that Alusha has honestly dominated. And don't get me wrong, 
Letter's opening was very strong that game. I think he could probably have won that game without Elusha at that point. Yes. But Elusha did just guarantee the 100% no questions asked win. Uh, even though the opening from Letter we could see incredibly strong, an incredibly strong victory there. Letter moves on to the semi-finals. And uh, what a great week for him so far. I think he's done extremely well. Yeah, I think so too. Again, I mentioned, I thought yesterday, and um, when we had a, a cleaner day all around, let's say, yeah. I felt like he was a very, a very big part of that. And I felt like he was seeing some really nice lines that I very much agreed with at the time. I think this is a real return to form for uh, Letter, who was a player I was very excited to see coming into Grandmasters because he carried a very uh, weighty reputation with him coming into this. So I'm very pleased to him see him putting in a good performance. Um, but that is a that is a top eight with a uh, a good mix of fortunes. It would be saying.